up guys, it's Cody and it is Friday, so that means we're gonna do another Bats and Bones quick blog. We've been talking about sponsorship, how to work up sponsorship, and we're gonna continue with that. This should be our last week with that, so woo. Um, if you have any more questions, I'm sure I've missed some stuff, so please throw those down in the comments below if you have any, you know, I'm sure there's some things I didn't cover, so please, please, please throw those down there and I will do my best to answer all of them. Um, I'll even make some, some separate standalone videos to cover everything, so. Um, we worked through everything as far as you know, building your brand, developing what your audience is and what you can do. So now we're looking at how to actually contact companies and what type of companies to contact. So you kind of have two sets in my mind. You have the companies who are industry companies, in industry, which are your obviously fishing related, fishing specific companies, your you know, lines, rods, reels, um, baits, obviously, things like that. And then you have your other ones. This would be your out of industry which is gonna be, you know, sunscreen, beef jerky, beer or something, you know, if you wanna go out to, those are, even though like, they might market through fishing, you might see them on TV marketing through fishing, they're going after that audience through that, it's not a fishing related. Um, a lot of those large companies, you're gonna to have to have a pretty large audience and, and to be able to sell yourself to them, um, for them to really want to pump any any large funds into into what you're doing so i would i would throw those to the side honestly if if you're going after the heavy hitters like that you're probably not even watching this video you're probably fairly established and know what you're doing so we're gonna look at the in industry companies you know for somebody who's just kind of got started fishing weekend tournaments they've been doing it a couple years and are looking to try to get a few a little bit of help um that's where you're going to start obviously because everybody wants more baits rods reels everybody wants that so that's where they're going to start um before I, I, I dive way into it, I do want to just kind of point this out because I didn't realize this uh, when I was first starting out, but it's true. A lot, a ton of these companies actually, especially like jig companies, spinnerbait companies, yeah, there are some big ones out there that have huge shops and stuff, but a lot of them, honestly, they're making them in their garage. You would be amazed at how many of these bait companies are tiny. They're, you know, two or three guys are making them and that's what they do. And so don't get offended, don't get mad when you go to talk to them and they just, you know, they can't. Number one, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot, a lot of companies really don't pay anything, don't pay much or don't pay anybody. You may see have some people that are pro staff, quote unquote, but a lot of times, you know, these guys with these smaller companies, which are, they get approached a lot because a lot of people approach the less popular companies. It's just how it is. So they get approached a lot. It, these smaller companies, a lot of times, it's a few guys who just love fishing, they have a passion for it, and so they come up with this company, and the funds that they're making, it's not even their full-time job, they're putting it right back into themselves. They're trying to sponsor themselves. You know, they're just trying to get out there and fish weekend tournaments. They're just trying to enjoy it. And so, it doesn't make sense for them to, to sponsor, you know, when they're a weekend guy, it doesn't make sense for them a lot of times to sponsor another weekend guy who's, who's starting out. So, and please nobody take offense to that. I'm just saying that's how, that's just how it is with a smaller company. So you're probably gonna be looking at product sponsorship to start out because once again, talked about it in the earlier videos, you're building that relationship. Um, I just wanna say, you know, recognize that a ton of fishing companies, even though it's rapidly growing, it, it's it's a, still a small industry and a lot of companies are not nearly as big as you think they are, I promise. So so pick out some companies. You know, we talked about the companies to look for. Um, I say first, go through go through and think. You probably don't, shouldn't even have to think about it. What rods do you truly believe in? Like you love them, they, you, you've been paying money for them already. What, what are the products? Find those products that you already really, really believe in. And because when you speak to them, you're, you, you know, <laughs> it's gonna become, it's a lot more organic than just trying to speak to a different product and, and forcing yourself to learn a different um, product line. So try to find those companies that you're already using, you already love, you already believe in them, and, and figure out a way to contact them. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, and this doesn't always work. A lot of times you're gonna get sent to, I think it's like National Pro Staff or SponsorMe.com. Thing, there's things like that that are, are becoming more popular. And a lot of that I think is it's becoming more popular because there's so many requests. A lot of these companies get multiple requests per day and it, it's hard for them to filter out um, who's really qualified and who's you know blanket emailing the whole industry. Um, so they've gone to a lot of these things, like I said, like I think it's National Pro Staff, or there's there's several different um, places like that. When I was racing motocross, it was like called uh, Sponsor House, I think was the big one then. But it's all the same. You go on there, build a profile. It's like a 
uh, Facebook for sponsorships to where you can apply. But you can do that, and, it, and if you if you do it, you know you'll probably get some percentage off and, and things like that. But I would go online because you've gone through, you've established your audience, you know what you're doing, you've put some time in this, so you know your own product. Which if you if you've done the research, you know how many people you're reaching, you know um, what you can do for the company because you've put your time in. So when you go out, you you figured out which products you really love and that you think you can represent well. Go out, and the best way is to just get on their website. Go down, contact us. Now, now that you're at the contact us page, you're gonna most likely, most likely, you're gonna have one of two options. You're gonna have a little contact box, or you're gonna have an email or phone number. And so you get to make the decision to shoot them a quick email saying, "Hey, I'm Jimmy John Bass Fishing, and I love your products, and I fish 36 tournaments a year." and I have four first place finishes and this and blah, 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 blah. Sponsor me please, send. Well, guess what? Yours just went in the mailbox, in the inbox, right there with everybody else's and it sounds exactly the same. They get tons of them and tons of them. And yeah, they might come back and give you a little something, but you have not set yourself apart. We talked about this before. You have to establish your brand. Now you have to establish yourself as something different. It's it's the same way. It's branding is go through Walmart. You know, okay, the products that sell well, they don't look like everything else. The big hit, it's just like a viral video online. Videos that go viral, they're not like everything else. They're not. You have to figure out a way to be different than everybody else. No one wants the same thing over and over and over. Because if you're the same thing then you're the same thing as everybody else online that's bass fishing. And so you therefore have, you, you're not going to have any more pull than anybody else. So, so what I'm getting at, <clears throat> if you want the best results, in my opinion, uh, pick up the phone. Uh, pick up the phone and call them. Can it be intimidating? Heck yeah. I think the first time I was calling my company, I, my hand was probably shaking because it's, you know, you're calling this, this company you have no idea who you're going to talk to. Um, but a lot of times the owner, especially if it's a smaller company, it's the owner's cell phone or something, you know, you're going to talk to them. Um, now be advised, this is the time to go humble, hat in your hand, realize that you're probably not, you're not all that that you think you are. You're not KVD, you know, you're not, you have, I don't care what level you're on, um, because you are replaceable and there and recognize, be humble, recognize that there's a ton of people out there doing the same thing you are. Um, obviously realize that they're probably a busy person with at least two jobs, one their bait company and one a real job. Um, real, just recognize that and recognize that they're giving you uh, some of their time. So kind of tell them you know, what you're doing. Uh, ask who the best person to speak with would be about advertising and about pro staff positions. Sometimes that might be the person who is already on the phone and sometimes it may not be. Uh, maybe you need to leave a message. Feel free, just leave a message. You know, the, the people, if you end up talking to somebody, if it's a larger company and you end up speaking with somebody who's a marketing director or advertising director or something like that, don't feel guilty or bad about leaving a message or calling with an inquiry because if they're the marketing director, it is their job to field these requests. It's their job to find people or find avenues to reach their market. Um, so don't feel bad about leaving a message. You know, don't feel like you're you're bugging if you're speaking to a marketing director um, or or somebody in the marketing department. So that's who you want to speak with is somebody in the actual marketing um, department. But like I said, a smaller company you may end up talking to the owner. Just give them a quick rundown of what um, what you're doing. You know, thank them for their time. Let them know that you recognize that they they get requests all the time because I promise you they do. I don't care if what kind of company it is, they're gonna get requests all the time. They're probably gonna get more via email than phone call. Um, in my opinion, and just personally, when people want something from me and they're asking something, I respect it a lot more if somebody will pick up a phone and call me rather than shoot me a text message or they will email me. Um, and so even if, even if the rest of the negotiation process or the rest of the talk goes through email, I think it's best to pick up the phone and call. Now, once you call, you may leave a voicemail, may not hear anything back, you may call again, and then you get a hold of somebody, you know, feel free to leave, I'll, if I'm leaving a, a voicemail, I would like to leave an email address because they might, you know, they might, they have a pretty good idea why you're calling. They might shoot you an email back, but a lot of times they'll respect the fact that you call. Now, 
let's say you go to the website and it has a contact us. It's either gonna have an email or um, one of the little contact form box. If that is all that's there, a lot of times they don't have a phone number, go in there and say, hey, you know, just tell them, you don't have to go full in depth. Just ask, you know, uh, who the best contact would be for, for a marketing, marketing opportunity, um, advertisement opportunity, because that's what you are. You're a marketing advertising opportunity. Excuse me. Here an avenue for marketing. Um, and a lot of times you will either get an email address, you know, a different, a better email address, or you will um, get a phone number and then you'll go there. And sometimes you may only be able to get an email. If that's the case, that's what you go with. It's not, I'm not saying it don't work. I'm just saying I like to call people. I think it's more respectful to pick up the phone and, and take that time to actually call them. So, sorry, I know I dwelled on that forever. Um, now, when you start doing this, you know, you have your resume to send up. A lot of times, obviously, you can't talk about a resume over the phone, but they can give you something and somewhere to, to send that resume, and then you can have a call later on to go over it or to, um, you know, talk it over. And have an idea in your head what you want. Have, have, have an ask. You know, it's a lot better in my mind to have an ask rather than just say, hey, I want a sponsorship. They say, well, what were you thinking? Oh, uh, well, uh, that's no good because you hadn't really thought about it. You know, think about, go back to thinking you or your own company and somebody calls you and say, well, what were you thinking? Well, I don't, because in my mind, in my opinion, if somebody calls you or if you call a company and they ask, what do you want? What are you thinking? And you only have an idea. That's a huge red flag in my opinion that all you're wanting is a sponsorship. You're just wanting to say that you are sponsored. So have, have something in mind. Don't just say, "Uh, oh, well, I thought we, you know, I just wanted, what do you, what can you offer me? Because that's exactly what you're asking. What can you give me? And that's not the way to go about it at all, in my opinion. Um, sorry, anyway, I, know, I know this is dragging on long, but after you contact them, um, recognize that there's a good chance you're gonna hear no. You're probably not gonna get what you want, especially the first year, but we're building relationships here. You're building this over time because as you're building this relationship, you're building your fishing career too to reach those goals that we talked about two, three, four videos ago. You're trying to reach those goals. And, and so you're trying to build a relationship early on with a company that you truly believe in and, and build those um, over time. So don't be offended if you hear no. Um, you have to be respectful. Like I said, be humble. Recognize that it's nothing personal. They've just looked at what you can offer the company and they don't think it's best for the company. Once again, it's their job to keep, you know, what is best for that company in mind. And it's their job to grow the company and spend that money, spend their allotment of product to give out or whatever. It's their job to grow that company through different avenues. And a lot of times you're just one avenue, um, one possible avenue to um, establish that goal. So I hope I've covered everything, guys. Like I said, you know, we have, we've talked about, I feel like we talked about a lot of it. Um, there's no perfect one way to do it, you know, but work on building your brand, work on getting that resume together. Um, always go hat in your hand, super humble, super respectful. Realize that you're one of thousands and thousands of people that contact these companies. Um, and, and try to figure out a way to set yourself apart. You know, there's several ways to do that. Um, just a lot of times I won't say be, be yourself. I know that's real cliche, but you know, just be yourself. Be, you are your brand. So be your brand and, and live that. Like that, I'm sure I missed several things. Please comment below. Any questions? Uh, I would love to hear some questions and I will uh, answer those via video. After this, I don't really know. I know I said we weren't gonna really structure the, the vlog to start with, but um, it ended up being kind of structured. After this, we'll probably, I don't know, we'll move on. Fishing season's gonna be here soon. So I should get the boat in uh, this week, next week. Anyways, I don't know. We'll get the boat in soon and so maybe do some rigging videos. Start doing more uh, fun vlogs. Like I said, if y'all got any questions, comments, please feel free. Subscribe and throw those down there and I will answer them later on. Thanks for watching all these guys. I know they're a little long and drawn out, but I really, really hope that they have helped you and possibly answered a few of your questions about how to go about um, getting sponsorships and, and building yourself into a fishing career, having that, having that fishing career that you've always dreamed of or even a hobby. But um, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Thank y'all for watching. Please subscribe and check back for next week.